In today's video, I'm going to be showing you five more front end hacks that you can add to your Home Assistant. Check it out. What's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. Previously, I've shown you five front end hacks that I like to make use of in my setups. If you've missed that first video, there'll be a link for it in the description below. In that video, we just run through the setup and install of those hacks and what you can do with them. And essentially, we're going to be doing the same thing today, but with another five hacks. If there's a particular front end item that you'd like to see me cover in the future, then let me know in the comments below. And who knows, I may just cover it in the next front end video. In order to access and make use of these front end items, you're going to first need to have hacks installed. Now, in this video, I'm not going to be going through the setup and install of hacks. So if you're new to Home Assistant or have no idea what hacks is, then check out this video I created with five add-ons for beginners. In that video, I run through the setup and install of hacks. So go and check that out and then come back to this one. And if you've got hacks installed, then you're good to go. The only other thing you're going to need to do if you're not already is hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell. You'll then be alerted to any future video that I do. And as always, this video will be chaptered. So if there's a particular front end item you want to see or you want to be able to skip back to it or skip to it, then check out those timestamps in the description below. Let's start off with our first one then. And we're going to have a look at the vacuum card. The process for accessing and installing each of these cards is going to be the same. So we're going to start off by choosing hacks and then we're going to choose front end. From here, we're going to want to press the explore and add repositories button, which is this blue button in the bottom right corner. In the search, we're then going to search for vacuum card. And we can see in this list, it's the second one down. So it's just vacuum card and we're going to press that one. By default, Home Assistant doesn't provide you with any kind of card for controlling or interacting with your robot vacuum cleaners, which is exactly where this card comes into play. So this card gives you a nice visual representation of your robot vacuum. You can have multiple different sensors and bits of information about your robot all on one card. The card's also animated, so when the robot's actually out cleaning, the little robot vacuum icon moves around. All of the information needed to set up and configure this card can all be found in this documentation. Here's a quick look at those animations that I mentioned. So on the left here, we've got the robot cleaning, and on the right, we've got the robot docking. And obviously, if the robot's docked and not moving around, the robot will just be stationary. It's a very nice card and it adds a bit of life to your dashboard, but it also obviously makes it super simple to see what's going on with your robot vacuum and makes it easy to control. Just on the left here is a list of supported vacuum models. Now, in theory, this card should work with any kind of robot vacuum, but this list is just compromised of vacuums it's been tested with. If your vacuum's not in that list, then don't worry. The chances are it will work, and if it does work, you can always open up a pull request to let the card creator know that your vacuum works, and you can get that vacuum added to this list. This card is created and maintained by Dennis Dovern, so thank you very much, Dennis, for your awesome work. You can find links to all of Dennis's various social media just at the top of the page here, and you can also find the official GitHub link for the card as well. To get started with this card, all we're going to need to do is hit the install button in the bottom right here. From here, we're then just going to press install, and then we'll get a pop-up telling us that we need to reload our browser. So let's press reload now. Once that reloads, the red banner from your vacuum card should disappear, and you should see the vacuum card appear in the list of available cards. With that installed, we can now start making use of this card. So let's head over to one of our dashboards now. For this demo, I'm going to be using a blank dashboard, so I'm going to click my empty dashboard just here. On my empty dashboard, I'm going to want to get that vacuum card added on. So let's press the three dots in the top right corner and choose edit dashboard. This is going to put us into edit mode where we can start adding the cards on. So we're going to choose add card at the top right there. That will then show us a list of all the different cards we can make use of on our dashboards. Now the card that we're interested in is the vacuum card. So in the search box here, we can start typing vacuum. And you can see as we start typing that, the actual vacuum card appears. If for whatever reason this card doesn't appear in your list, try clearing your browser cache and rebooting Home Assistant. We can now select the card and start configuring it. The vacuum card will automatically select any robot vacuums you've got connected to Home Assistant. So if you've got multiple different ones, you'll be able to change it in this drop down here. For me, I've only got the one, so I've just got the one listed there. This particular robot is a Bagotti BG800 and it's not actually in that supported list. The other interesting thing about this robot is it's connected to the Tuya service and it's integrated into Home Assistant using the new Tuya V2 integration. If you have a Tuya vacuum, you'll know that there's never been an easy way to actually get the vacuum into Home Assistant without either making use of a bunch of different scenes, running local Tuya or flashing your device. But now, thanks to the new Tuya V2 integration, Tuya vacuums are now supported. If you're interested in finding out how to get your Tuya vacuum into Home Assistant, check out a video I did on the new Tuya V2 integration. If you're planning on using the Tuya V2 integration, just a quick word of warning, the integration is in beta, so do expect some bugs. 
For example, to your robot vacuums, the status for them is always set to clean in, even if they're docked. Now this doesn't affect the robot in any way, like it will still go out and still return to its dock. It's just, you can't use that nice little animation. It's just always cleaning. This will be fixed in the next update, but for now it is what it is. So moving back on from this to your tangent, let's carry on with configuring our card. By default with this card, we can see information about the robot's battery in the top right there. Along the bottom, we've got three different controls. We've got pause, stop and dock. And then just above those controls, there's the status for the robot. So for me, if this one was working, that status there should be docked. In the UI, I've got access to a few different toggles here. So I can change different things about the robot. So if I wanted to show the name, I could toggle that on and off. And you can do the same thing if you want to be able to show the robot status on or off and also the toolbar on or off. There's also a setting here for compact view. So if you want the card to be really small and just view those controls and the status, you can do that too. We're going to just stick with the default options and we're just going to press save. And that's our vacuum card added to the dashboard with its default settings. As I mentioned, you can customize the vacuum card. Now we're just using the default settings for it, but you can do things like add more information to it and change those controls. In this example here, you can see that there's more information and the controls have all been swapped down the bottom. There is a more advanced configuration for the vacuum card available on the vacuum card GitHub. On the GitHub page, you can also see a description of all the different attributes and options that you can customize. So go check those out and get customizing. Okay, next up, we've got the Fold Entity Row. The Fold Entity Row is one of the many awesome cards created by Thomas Lovan. There'll be a link to Thomas's GitHub in the description below. So go and check that out. He's created a whole bunch of different Home Assistant cards and all of them enhance and improve your whole dashboard experience. So thank you, Thomas. As we did with the previous card, we're going to navigate to Hacks and choose Front End. In the search, we then want to start typing fold. And we should see the fold entity row appear, and we'll just choose that. And if you couldn't tell by the name of the card, this one's going to allow us to fold rows of entities. And you can see that in an example just here. So here we've got the bed light, which is collapsed. And if you open that up, you would see three different entities underneath that. So under that bed light there, there's the bed light, ceiling lights, and kitchen lights. Pressing on the expand and collapse icon is going to cause that row to open and close. Again, we're going to press install this repository in Hacks and install. And then we want to make sure we do the all important reload. And once we've reloaded, we're going to head back to our dashboard. From here, we're going to add a new card. I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and choose manual. We're then just going to paste in the example, which you can find in the description below or over on the fold row GitHub page. And with that pasted in, we can have a quick look at what it is that this card's doing. In the first line, we're obviously defining what the type of card is. So this one is a fold entity row. Just below that, we're setting the head and entities. The head is kind of like the top of the collapsible row. So if you think of that as the very top and then the entities are the bits that come underneath it. In my example here, I've set the head to be light one. And then just on the right here, we can see a preview of it. So the head of mine is light one. And then if I expand this, we can see all those collapsed items are these entities that are listed here. This is probably the simplest config that you can have with the fold entity row, so hopefully that's quite clear to you. Just to recap that then, you're going to have your head, which is going to be the top of the row, and then just below that you're going to have your entities, and the entities are going to be what appears in the collapsible row. With the entities, I think you can actually have as many as you want, so feel free to just populate as many entities in that list as you want. We're just going to keep this one nice and simple, so let's just go ahead and click save on that. And we can now see that on our dashboard, and if we click on the little expand icon in the top right there, we can see it bring down that menu and if we press it again, it will take it back up. Just to make it a bit clearer and also to show off some of the other things that you can do with this card, I've put together some of Thomas's other examples. So first up at the top here, we've got this simple example. Now this is the one that we just created where it's got the head and then a few entities below it. In that first one, we're actually defining each of the entities that are going to appear in the collapse row. Just below that, we've got the same kind of thing with this downstairs light. So if we expand that out, we can see we've got the head there and then three entities. With this second one down, we're actually not defining any entities. We're just setting the head to be a group. By setting that head to be a group, we're actually dynamically populating that row. So anything within the group will actually appear in that row. And anytime you add or remove from that group, the row will actually automatically update. Next up, we've got a nested example. And with this one, it's going to allow you to have multiple different fold rows all in the same card. So if I just expand this, we can see I've got light three there, and then I've also got another expandable option here. So I can also expand this one out here. And then below that, there's also another one to expand. So you get the idea with that. You can have multiple different levels of expansion, so you can open them and close them as you wish. With the nested example, you just simply define another fold entity row within the current fold entity row that you're actually in. 
And again, with this one, I think you can do this as many times as you want as well. Following on from this, we've got the padded example. So with this one, it's going to allow you to set padding on your entities that are in the entity row. We can see in my example here, I've currently got a padding of five. So let's just up that to 50. And on the right here, you'll see that update. So you can freely scale this number up or down to align the entities to where you want them within the card. This last one then is nice and simple. So by default, the entity rows are always collapsed. So whenever you view the card, it will always be open and you'll have to manually close it. And that's been a quick look at the fold entity row. Next up, we've got the slider button card. And again, we're back in hacks, back in the front end. And this time we're doing a search for slider button. So I can see that there, slider button. I'm just going to click that one. And what this one allows us to do is to add sliders to our buttons. So it gives a bit of extra functionality and a new feature to buttons. With this one, you actually get a nice example of what the card does. So if you imagine you've got a button and a slider and you mash them together, you get this button slider or slider button. And essentially what this does is it gives you a button with some slider abilities. So you can toggle the button like you normally would by pressing it on and off or setting whatever action you want on it. Or you can use the slider to drag across or up and down on the button to perform another action. Let's get this thing installed then and see what it does. So we're going to press the install this repo in hacks and install. And again, that all important reload, make sure you do the reload. Once reloaded, we can again head back to our dashboard. And yep, you guessed it, we're gonna add a new card and this time we're gonna be adding our slider button card. In that list now, you should see this custom slider button card, so we can press that. This particular card is actually all configurable from the UI, so it's very approachable and welcoming to new users. On the right hand side here, we've got the usual preview of our card. And on the left here, we've got four different groups of options. Let's have a look at this first one, which is general. In here, we can set our entity. So I'm just gonna set this one to be light one as I've been using that throughout my examples. Next up, we've got an optional parameter for the name. So whatever you set in here is gonna be the name that appears in this entity. You can put whatever you want in there as it is an optional field. For me, I'm just gonna leave that as light one, but if you wanted to call that awesome light or whatever it is, you could put that in there. We've then got three toggles. So we can show the state, we can show the name, and we can also have the compact view. By default, the name and state both show, but compact is turned off. So if we just turn that on, it will show you what it looks like in compact mode. So we can see it kind of just reduces that in half and reduces the footprint of the actual card. Following on from general, we've got the icon. Here you can give it a custom icon if you want to. You can also choose to show or hide that icon and you can also set the state color. What the state color will do is it will set the color of the little icon to be whatever color the bulb is. So if you're using a multicolored bulb, whatever color that is, is, will be whatever color the icon is. If it's not a colored bulb, if it's turned on, it will be yellow. And if it's off, it won't be. You've also got a tap action. So this tap action would be the same as what you'd get with a button. So you can choose an option from this drop down menu here and you can assign one of these options to do an action. Below that, we've got options for the slider. At this point, I should probably show you what the slider button does. So at the top here, we've got the preview of my button. And if I hover over it, you can see I get that horizontal arrow. And what this indicates is, is that I can drag the slider left or right. You can also set it to be vertical. So the arrow will be the other way around and you can drag up or down on the card. The way that you change that direction is just set in the direction here in the slider options. So you can have it left to right, you can have it top to bottom, or you can have it bottom to top. So for this example, if I was to drag my slider from left to right and start bringing it up, that's going to start changing the brightness of my light. So if I drag that to about there, that's now set my light to be 59%. So this light is now set to 59% brightness. And you can actually do this with other entity types. So you could do this with something like a fan. So you could adjust the speed of the fan by just dragging a slider up or down. You can also set the background color for the slider. So if you want it to be a set color, you can do that. It defaults to being a gradient. So you've got at the top there, we can see it starts off at a light blue and it gets darker and darker as it goes across. To change the background, it's as simple as just clicking this drop down list here. So you could have a solid color, you can have the gradient, which it currently is. You can have triangular, so it's like a triangle slope going up or down. Uh, the striped, so it's like lines going up and down and also custom. With the slider options, you've also got this option to four square. And what this is gonna do is instead of it being this rectangle block, it's gonna always enforce that it's a square shape. This could be useful if you're making some kind of grid that's populated with little buttons. The last option for the card then is action button. And what this is gonna do is just toggle on and off this little button that you see in the top right here. So if you wanted to, you could hide that little button in the top right entirely, or you could set that little button to do a custom action. With this one, we're also just keeping it simple. So we're just gonna leave it at that and we're just gonna press save. And we can see that card on our dashboard there. And if we just exit edit mode, just to make it a bit clearer, we can see that slider button. 
So if I just slide up and down, you can see that adjusting as I'm sliding up and down. A shout out to Matea for actually creating this card. I'm sorry if I butcher your name, but thank you for the awesome card. As well as putting together an awesome card, there's also some really good documentation to go with it. So this documentation's got full examples and full instructions on how to set it up. You can set up slider buttons for the majority of entities. So you can set them up for lights like we did in our example. You can set them up for fans, switches, covers, media players, climate and locks. And as I mentioned, you can put all these buttons into grids and just keep it nice and uniform. And that's your slider button card. Up next, we're having a look at the digital clock. Back in Hacks, you want to just do a search for digital clock. And we're just going to install this one. This card is going to be the simplest one to set up because all we need to do is just add the card to the dashboard and we're done. The clock should automatically set itself to be our local time. In our list, we can see the digital clock just here. So we're going to press that and we're going to click save. There are a ton of different clocks that you can get for your Home Assistant dashboards and a lot of them do have more functionality than what this one gives you. I personally like this one. It's super simple to set up and install and I actually make use of this one on my wall mounted tablets. If there's a particular Home Assistant clock that you make use of that you really like, then let me know in the comments below. Moving on to our last card then, we've got the RGB light card. So just do a search for RGB light card, find it, install it and do your reload. The RGB light card is another super simple one, but it's very effective and super handy if you've got RGB bulbs. The card allows you to create your own custom presets for light colours and have them all displayed neatly in an entity row. For me personally, this one's super handy for quickly changing the colour of the bulbs in the kids' rooms if you don't want to make use of the Amazon Echo or Google Home. For the last time in this video, we're back on the dashboard and we're going to just add our last card. And at the bottom here, we can see the custom RGB light card. It would be nice if you could fully set this card up from the GUI, but sadly you can't. So from the GUI, you can set things like the title, you can give it a theme, and you can show your headers and also the icon colours. You can also define what your main entity is going to be. In this example, mine's just light too. And then below that, I can see the information, which is going to be the colours here. By default, you're given four different colours to start with, and you can colour these however you like. You can also add as many different colours as you want to, and once you get to the end of the row, it'll just start a new row of colours. To edit these colours, we're going to need to do it in code. So we can either click this edit button here, or we can click this show code editor here. And that's actually much easier to see what's going on. So we can see here we've got an entity of the light 2. So that gives us this light 2 and switch. And then below that we're defining all of these colours. And we're telling it that these colours are linked to that light. To set the colour of the light, you can use any of the supported colour profiles. By default it uses RGB, but you could use things like HS colour or just colour name. And I'll show you a quick example of this now. So here we could swap one of these RGB colours out. And I could just set that to be colour blue. Or if I didn't want blue, I could just change the name of the colour here and it could be green or it could be yellow. You can view information about the light and the supported colour profiles over at the Home Assistant page. That will tell you information about the HS colour. You can also look at things like XY colour, RGB colour and so on. If you're sticking with RGB, you can make use of an RGB colour calculator like the one that's over at W3 Schools. And on here, you're just going to drag the sliders and define your own colour. So drag the sliders around until you create your desired colour and then you're going to want to make note of the RGB values on the side there. You can then just come back into here and add those values in place and you'll see that your colour updates. As well as just using solid colours, you can also make use of gradient colours, images, labels and custom icons. All of these things add a bit of uniqueness to the buttons. They can also be mixed and matched so you can create your own desired effect. If you're interested, all of this code will be in the description below. And if you check out the official GitHub page, you'll find all the documentation with more examples on there. A massive thank you to Boris for creating this card and also for creating the icon tool. The icon tool converts the material design icons into CSS, which allows you to use them on your buttons. It's super simple to use. And again, I'll have it linked in the description. I'll just give you a quick demo now on how to actually use it. So you want to just open up the icon tool and then there's going to be three parameters that you need to fill in. The first one's going to be your icon name. So you just need to set the name of the material design icon here that you want to use. Let's say, for example, I wanted to change this light bulb icon to a lightning bolt. I could do that here by just setting the material design icon. As soon as you change that, you'll see the icon on the right update there. The next parameter we need to change is the icon color. So if we hit the edit button here, we'll get this handy little color chooser. So select the color that you want and then just drag and drop. With that selected, you then just need to set the background color. So again, press the edit button and then just choose your background color. I'm happy with that icon and I can see just below here that's all been converted into CSS. 
So I'm just going to copy all of this. Then I'm going to come back into Home Assistant, into my card config, and I'm just going to paste this in here. And we can see just there that my custom icon's been added in. I'm happy with all those changes, so I'm just going to press save. And we can now see the RGB card on our dashboard. And there we go, guys. That's been a little look at five more front-end hacks. If you're after any more information for any of the cards, then feel free to let me know in the comments below. I'll have links to all of the cards GitHubs in the description, so feel free to check out the official documentation for all of the cards. If you've got any cool dashboard setups, feel free to swing by my Facebook group and share some screenshots of it. And that's pretty much it for this one. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop me a like. And if you're not already, hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell. You'll then be alerted to any future video that I do. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons. If you're interested in supporting my channel and becoming one of these awesome dudes, then there'll be a link to my Patreon in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.